Arte friends, welcome to Classics in Color, which is normally your weekly dive into some of the ancient world's wackiest facts, but today I am reviewing HBO's Rome Season 2. Let's get started. So, spoilers! And also, thank you. A few weeks in the comments, somebody said, they gave me a warning that I guess halfway through season two, everything speeds up, like out of nowhere, really, really fast. And that's because they knew they were getting canceled and so they were trying to wrap everything up. So thank you very much for that warning because I was still confused, but then I remembered and I was less confused. So thank you for that. And it's also kind of a shame because a lot of the plot lines do end up being very rushed and it's not their fault, obviously. And I'm glad that they made that effort to wrap everything up so it doesn't just end in the, in the middle of things. So I'm glad that they did that, but it's also sad because you know if they had more time, um, a lot of these conclusions could have been even better, could have been even more satisfying. So that's kind of sad. Um, I don't really have like a script <laughs> or anything for this video. I'm just kind of gonna share my thoughts and feelings with you guys. So hopefully uh, that turns out all right. So I know one theme I wanted to talk about was suicide. I didn't really talk about this last season, even though there were several good suicides uh, in that season as well. Actually, one of my favorite scenes from season one was when Adia and Octavian and their whole family, they're in their villa. And uh, there's a bunch of like plebs, there's a mob outside and they're trying to break in. And Adia is going around arranging how everyone is going to die. Like, okay, a slave is gonna kill you, and then the slave is gonna kill me, and the slave will kill themselves. Are you okay killing yourself? Do you need a slave? It's just a really funny scene, like darkly humorous, um, but also very interesting in that it gives us a little bit of that insight into the mindset of a noble living in the ancient world. It's pretty brutal. And then in this season, we get a whole bunch of suicides as well. So we get Brutus kind of killing himself via soldiers, I guess. He runs into an army uh, alone, so he knows he's gonna die that way. And I just really appreciate this show in general really getting me invested in Brutus because he's not a character that generally gets a lot of time spent on him. So I, I really enjoyed that and I liked Brutus and thought he had a, a good ending. Um, and then, of course, we have uh, Antony and Cleopatra committing suicide, and I really loved them. I thought their whole thing together was a lot of fun. I kind of wondered if they would go in a different direction because uh, Octavian and Augustus's propaganda about them was, yeah, they're living in debauchery and they're a drunken mess. And so I wondered if they would go the other way and say, oh, no, they're actually not doing that. They're just uh, being very rational, reasonable people. But no, they, they leaned hard into their partying and doing drugs and all that. But I thought that was fun. Uh, I'm not mad at that. And then there's suicide, the way Cleopatra like uh, manipulates Antony. And also how Antony um, uses Lucius to uh, kill himself. So that was a really touching moment. This nobleman who's sort of crying into the chest of his uh, noble or his uh, loyal man that has been there with him for this whole show. Uh, that was really great. And then Cleopatra going <laughs> with the snake because she wants to avoid bloating. She wants her body to look good. So instead of taking the painless poison, she, she goes with the snake. And I, I also liked how she got her last few words to sort Sort of spit in, in Octavian's face. So um, some great suicides in this season uh, that I thought were very touching, moving, and interesting. I'm just gonna go through uh, characters, I think, and how their storylines ended up. Uh, we had a few new ones this season. So uh, Timon was in season one, but now uh, his brother was in it. And honestly, I was kind of bored of that whole storyline. I, I wanted to be interested in it because it's cool to see how different ethnicities besides just the Romans <laughs> interact with their world and see the world and a Jewish perspective um, I wanted to be interested in, but I just wasn't, so I felt bad about that. And then um, we had the new Octavian, which I liked him at first. I thought he was pretty cool, but then he started to kind of annoy me. And I know that's kind of the point with him, that he's kind of a pain in the ass, but I liked the original Octavian better because it's not, he was still hard, like brutal and clever and conniving, but he also still had a human side. Um, he still felt like a real person, whereas this Octavia didn't feel real, and I didn't understand, like, what are his motivations other than just winning, I guess? But I didn't even really see that. I don't know. He, he was just weird. He didn't quite feel like a real human. It felt like maybe they were going a little overboard with that. 
or I, I don't know what the deal was, but he, he bugged me a little bit. But again, I think they were doing it on purpose. So it just was not my preference. <laughs> I don't know. But what I did like was his whole posse. So we get to see Mycenas and Agrippa. And I loved that, especially because I always picture both of them as being like old. But in this show, they're young. They're like 18 or 20. They're like kids. And Mycenas is really cool. Actually, he's a patron, uh, a patron of a whole bunch of poets from the Augustan era. And the Augustan era is kind of my personal favorite. It's where most of my favorite authors are. Um, and he was like working with them and friends with them and supporting them. So it's really cool to see him get portrayed because he almost never gets portrayed. And then also Agrippa. And of course that actor is just adorable. So his little relationship with Octavia was uh, very sweet. Especially actually in the first part when they weren't having sex actually. Um, I know it's HBO so everybody has to have sex but when it was just sort of this innocent little I love you thing and not like we're just smashing in closets. Um, I don't know that was just like more romantic I guess but uh, they do hint at how they're eventually going to get together at, after the end of season two so I, I thought that storyline uh, wrapped up pretty well. Then the whole feud between um, Atia and Sir William. Whew, those gals that hate each other. They were going so freaking hard. I feel like in the first half of season two, uh, Adia like kidnaps Servilia and is torturing her. And that felt a little bit like HBO again, trying to take everything to 11. It felt like a little too much, a little unnecessary. But at the end when Servilia is like chanting outside of the villa and then kills herself, that was pretty good. I liked that. And then also Atia, how she goes through this whole phase of being in love with Anthony but then not being able to marry Anthony. Actually, I, th I wanted them to play that up a little bit more because the whole time she was talking about, oh yes, we're going to get married. It's going to be so amazing. I'm going to buy a dress. And everyone is just like sitting there looking at each other. Oh, that was delicious. I loved that. Um, but then at the end when she's mourning Anthony, but she still puts on her brave face. She gets dressed, she shows up, and then she's like getting in this whole little cat fight with Livia. Like, I go first, I'd have precedence over you. I, I love that. I've always kind of liked Adia, that she's like this horrible person, but I still kind of like her. Um, and season two, she's still a horrible person, but I, I liked her even more. I liked uh, her ending, how she was such a strong person that even as you see, she's mourning Anthony. This is the love of her life, more or less and she's seeing his armor paraded by and she's mourning but she's also being strong i really like that i didn't totally understand how it seemed like all of a sudden her and octavia her daughter are best friends and <laughs> season one they were not best friends so maybe i just missed it but it seemed like out of nowhere it was just a switch for their characters and to be fair like time has passed and also octavia has had a lot of time to grow up and see why her mother is so hard and is the way she is so maybe they've been reconciled but i just didn't really see it happen or I, I missed that happening. Then Titus Pulo. Uh, I love Pulo by the end of season two. He has grown on me so much. Although it was so sad. They did not have to kill off his wife. That was unnecessary. Although I understand it made really good drama for Gaia to have killed his wife, right? But also, I mean, she killed her while she was pregnant. That's, that's a little much. Like, geez. <sighs> yeah, that one hurt. But then it was also really cool to see Polo like strangle her and then dump her in a pond. That was uh, very dramatic, <laughs> very satisfying. But I just felt like he deserved better. But I guess at least he gets his son, which that was probably my favorite thing of season two. If you remember, I really enjoyed that it was Polo who fucked Cleopatra and then Caesarian, they hint at and then they definitely confirm in this season is actually his son. And so the whole thing with him and Lucius sort of sharing this joke together and then Lucius sneaking Caesarian out. And then historically, I believe, um, as far as we know, Caesarian did die, but in this show he gets to live, which is awesome. But he's also like this incredibly stuck up, annoying little prince sling. And so the fact that now he's going to have to learn how to live like a normal life is so funny. Um, and he's going to have to live with Pulo. And so the interaction between those two, I, I can just imagine would be amazing. So I loved that. Then Lucius. Uh, he had quite the storyline as well. I didn't love... So TV shows have this thing 
where if they have a successful functioning couple, they always have to either break them up or kill one of them. And it kind of annoys me. Like I enjoy watching a couple that can actually like work and function together. <laughs> I think that's really interesting. So like in House of Cards, the best season is season one uh, because they're like on the same page. Like they're evil and they kind of hate each other, but they also love each other and they have like a working relationship. And just seeing that whole dynamic is really interesting to me. So <clears throat> I don't like when shows do this when they kind of take the easy way out to create more drama. <clears throat> and so the whole phase that Lucius goes through after his wife dies, while understandable, you know, every anyone would be depressed after that happened, I just don't really enjoy watching that. I kind of was turned off by that. But when he has to go on the whole quest to save his kids, that started to get interesting again. By the way, as soon as that one guy said like, oh, I killed your kids, you'll never see them again. I was like, oh, he's totally lying. And I was right, he was totally lying. Uh, and Lucius finds out that his kids are alive eventually and he goes to save them. And the scene where he has to go to this quarry where all these slaves are working, that was brutal, but interesting. Because I know I've talked in the past about how slavery wasn't necessarily how we picture it. There are plenty of slaves that were living very nice lives but not these slaves, right? The slaves that are working in quarries and in mines and in fields have really brutal lives. So it was crazy to see that get portrayed, uh, but also kind of interesting. And then the whole dynamic with him and his kids afterwards, because he's not trying to be a tyrant, right? He's trying to be a good guy and take care of his family and do what's right and all this stuff. But from their perspective, he's like a murderer and they hate him. They cannot stand him. And so neither of them, like he is, he can't understand how they're thinking. He's like, completely oblivious to it. And they also like cannot understand that he just loves them and is trying to be a dad. And it's just a really uh, weird and interesting dynamic. And also I can imagine must have been like really common in the ancient world that there are these men who just are oblivious <laughs> to the feelings of the people around them, but the people around them can't really say anything or do anything because the men have so much power. So I thought that was interesting to see that kind of uh, family dynamic portrayed. Again, that was a storyline that I felt got resolved a little bit quickly. And again, that wasn't their fault, but it seemed like all of a sudden <laughs> he was just uh, reconciled with his kids again, which to be fair, it's not like they pulled it out of nowhere. He is dying and that is a good time for, even if you don't love your parents, you still wanna go see them before they die and say, hey, you, you're my dad. Um, so it wasn't terrible, but it did feel a little rushed. I did like how he still had that little uh, portrait of his wife Niobe, and how uh, Tulo made sure to save it for, or Pulo made sure to save it for him, uh, and he's sort of looking at that at, as he's dying. Um, I thought that was really good. Oh, Cicero, I really liked. At the beginning, he was uh, annoying me a little bit still because he's just such a pushover, and I guess that's kind of true. But I don't know. I don't love how they did all of that. Uh, but by the end, he stops being a pushover. He stands up, uh, faces faces the music and he had a very like peaceful brave confrontation with death that I really liked and also his whole interaction with Pulo who's come to kill him they're just like so matter-of-fact and polite with each other that I, I really appreciated and enjoyed that whole scene I thought that was really great actually so I'm sure I forgot a ton of stuff, guys. It was a long show and I sort of binge watched it over the weekend to uh, finish so I could film this. So hopefully I didn't forget anything uh, too crucial, but overall it was very good. I liked it. It was a bit rushed, um, but they couldn't really help that. There were some plot lines and some characters that, you know, either I didn't really care about or that I thought were kind of annoying, but Overall, very good. Again, not like completely historically accurate about everything, but as far as a lot of the daily life stuff went, as far as like the feel and the tone and the mindset of a lot of the characters, I felt like they got that really good. And as far as I know, pretty, pretty accurate. So uh, again, like thumbs up. I definitely liked it. I'm excited to hear all of your like thoughts and feedback on this. And uh, yeah, thanks for checking out this video. I hope you have a great week. I'll see you all again next time. Karate.